It's easy for us in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, to think of Europe and the East Coast of the U.S. as, as the spot as far as wooden boats and classic boats are concerned. So when we started hearing about the Australian Wooden Boat Festival, it kind of came as a surprise, especially when we heard it was one of the largest festivals in the world for wooden boats. Yeah, so we started looking into it, and where was it in Australia? And it was in Tasmania. Well, where's Tasmania? We <laughs> Tasmania is a separate island state off the coast of Australia, separated by the Bass Strait. This is this is one short hop from Antarctica. How could a huge wooden boat festival be in such a remote location. This is an island centered initially around whaling and fishing. Then when you start looking at the terrain, it's rugged and the water is cold and the weather is intense. The island of Tasmania was covered with fantastic wood for boat building. The combination of these conditions has created you know, generations of sailors, real sailors, and bred a culture of self-reliance. It's a uh, wild place. And for sailors today, the southern coast of the island is known as one of the world's great cruising grounds. And all of a sudden, all this maritime culture descends upon the cosmopolitan port of Hobart in a day. From other places in Australia and New Zealand and internationally, and it's not easy to get there. I mean, that, that straight to come across there is rough. The docks fill up and the festival is on. Imagine over 500 boats on display, most of which you can get on board talk to the owners, the people are welcoming and friendly and there's music playing and kids are having fun and 220,000 people walking through and checking it all out. There's tall ships, there's tiny boats, power boats, sailboats, there's cuda boats, piner's ponts, there's yachts, there's working boats, all kinds of boats and every boat has a story. Cuda boat is one example. Cuda boats were great Australian fishing boats, and they pretty much completely died, and they were all gone, except a boat builder in Southeast Australia picked up a couple and fixed them up, and then they started winning races, and everybody figured out, wow, these are great boats. The boats are fantastic, but really it's the hospitality and the people that are just phenomenal. The Aussie hospitality is legendary and it's there in force. When the moon is a covered global and the songs are lazy shade of there was no better example of the hospitality of Australians than Gypsy. Some of these guys have been sailing together on this hundred year old yawl for decades. But they welcomed me aboard for an afternoon sail, handed me a beer. It was as if I was one of the crew. There's, there's years and years and years of history. You know, a lot of, just, that's what I was just mentioning. An off-center harbor member steered us to Ned Truartha. Just a guy building beautiful boats in a very humble shop. Who's the real deal? Tasmania is known to have one of the best fisheries in the world for fly fishing. So I was, I was hoping to go fly fishing. And uh, sure enough, at the festival, there was a drift boat. <laughs> 10 minutes later, I had booked two days fishing in the Northern Highlands with Peter and Karen at Driftwater. Again, just the hospitality was, was pretty incredible. I felt at home in a place I'd never been.
So the festival's early February. You really gotta go for a month. So just, just plan on booking the whole month of February for Tasmania. <laughs>